Hello everyone, this is the Game of Pup here, and today I'm back for part two of Gone Home. Last time we returned home, we are playing as Katie Greenbrier. We returned home from a our Europe trip. Nobody's home. We did explore around the house a bit, at least the downstairs section. We've learned some stuff. Our father is a bit of a JFK. He is really... He's a JFK enthusiast. The whole assassination of JFK, etc. We had Mr. Crackers. Say hello, Mr. Crackers. And, um... Well, we learned a little bit about her sister as well, who seems to be falling in love for a girl named Lonnie. Also, I've been hearing things in the house. I... I don't know, I'm hearing like creaking and whatnot. I'm not liking it. But this episode, we're gonna head upstairs. So let us do this. Uh, don't know if there's, ooh, newspaper, okay. Controlled burn scheduled for Boone County. Plumes of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County over the better part of next week. As part of a forestry service run, controlled burn of overgrown sections of the Flintlock National Forest. Oh, also, um. We are apparently living in the Psycho House because our, it's not grandfather, so a family member of ours uh, lived here for most of his life. He wasn't really seen. He potentially died in this house, so this house could potentially be haunted. I don't know how I feel about that, though. Forestry crews have been preparing the area for months. The burn operation will take place between 8 to 5. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly into Thursday. Depending on the speed of progress, according to the Forestry Service. Uh, in addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation that can lead to uh, wildfires in drier months, the operation will serve as a valuable training tool for the forestry and firefighting personnel involved, said senior conservationist Janice Greenbrier. Or a mother. Smoke will likely linger in the area through the fall weekend. Okay. Good to know. I don't like how dark the hallway is. What do we got here? Notice a temporary personal transfer. Bruce Pendleton, head of personal. I heard a beep. To aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation, a ranger with expertise in the procedures being transferred to the station from the National Forest. Effective... September 2nd, 94. Place the attached personal file. Overseeing officer. Oh, our mother. Okay. Charged with supervision and transferred person. Now, the duration of transfer will be based on performance evaluation as well as the recommendation of the overseeing officer. Hmm. Good to know. Okay, then. What we got here? Bratmobile. Potty mouth. Oh, you're going to like this one. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is, like, instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour <laughs> and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know. I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, You have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. Mm. October, yeah, the 4th of October, 94. We got here. Stop leaving every damn light in the house on. You're as bad as your sister, Sam. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I've been leaving the lights on because I don't like it. How dark it is. Daniel called again. He wants his Nintendo game back. Daniel called. Uh, to whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going to the city on my own is frankly absurd. Compared with Katie, who is only three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. Oh, wow. I see some 
anger right here. I just want to spend an evening in a normal... Totally safe city on my own, like a human being. And since you may also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Ooh. Keep out. Oh. Oh. It's a nice room. Okay, any clothes? More clothes. Oh. A cassette. Bratmobile and cool schmool. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're so cool, cool. We're so cool, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, too. Cool schmool. <laughs> okay, no thank you. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's like, ooh, no thank you. Adventurous the cat returns. Oh. Let's turn that off. That's really noisy. Hello? I heard that. Journey of Crystal. Super Spitfire. Okay. Well, there's text. Why? Why is that an option? Fly drawn. What do we got in here? Got your number. Oh, it's one of these games. Oh, wow. That's really old. Okay. Uh, King's Labyrinth, Chapter 2. Fraying Threads. Captain Allegra, still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead, immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalk chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moths that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer, it turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the, f at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked on the blackness of the passage for a moment too, for a moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently, ahead, following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth. They came upon a rocky gap, spilling forth otherworldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal and rotted robes, the king was hunched over the blue orb, top in his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, uh, causing it to glow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase, hewn from rock, led down into the chamber from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you. But the first mate interrupted. No, I am smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with mystic energies like these. I will circle to the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him on a merry chase. She held up the silk line, all traced by this invis invincible... A thread, of course. Allegra said, It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. First mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warmer. The first mate tied the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across at the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his, Wait. No. No! The singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out, to do anything to stop the first mate from running head first into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran. 
Summoning his undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distress and speed. From some dank passage much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running toward the sound. The line in Allegra's hand went taut and shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathering line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply, its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed to the ground and ran, ran, ran. Oh no. Oh no. What? Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, Sam had thi this, like fourth grade. What do we got here? Hold oh, it's a Bible. Oh. Yeah, let's just, let's cover that up. It's a collar. Oh, they had a cat. Oh. A plaque. Okay. Nice. I'm guessing... Well, it's obvious they don't have a cat anymore. Oh, well, that's sad. Oh, what do we got here? Hi, Lonnie. I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker on the way to school. It's what all the ki cool kids are doing. I've decided... Uh, write me back, and also, here's an idea for something to draw. Two cats on a motorcycle. Hey, this is a good idea. What all the ki cool kids are doing is actually sending each their pages on their beepers. But we're cooler than them, because guess what? They can't put this on a beeper. <laughs> uh, your draw on the cats was so good that I added a background to make it even better. Maybe I should just uh, stick to writing, though. <laughs> I like it. How did you know they were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish... Fish? Yeah, Fish right now. I feel like uh, he uh, probably would have a lot of cats. Also, like his secret shame is that he watches 90210 religiously. I'm going to ask him about the cats after class. He said he has two cats and also that he's never watched 90210. But I could see in his eyes he was lying. <laughs> Uh, Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you, Mr. Locke. Ah. Read college. Uh, I'm not going to read through all that. So, looking into college, I see. I mean, I'm looking into it myself, so I completely get it. What do we got here? Emma, Frankenstein, several books. Ben Hur, Tom Sawyer, Oliver Twist, The Virginian, hmm, Call of the Wild, War of the Worlds. Nice. Nice. Let's turn that on. It's so dark over here. Barely see anything. Crumpled note. Again, I'm hearing creaking. Uh, Mr. Benchley observed Miss DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. A large... A uh, beer can labeled Pass Blue Ribbon. Mr. Soto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. Mr. Soto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker, or to be suspended for the rest of the day. Mr. Soto chose suspension. Her father was called, but there was no answer, no answering machine. Mr. Soto must return this form tomorrow, signed by her father. Oh. Ugh. Okay. I got here. Uh, AIDS in Africa. Eddie Vedder. Weezer. Hmm. Got another magazine. Kurt Cobain. Oh, yeah. He did pass in 94. Yeah, passed in 94. I want to believe. Nice. Nice. What we got down here? A uh, bike. This is the one me and my dad are building. Want to go for a ride when it's done? Oh. Samantha Greenbrier, year 11. Teacher Fletcher. Not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait. Reasonable subject. 
subject but not complex when I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents names I did not mean just add them underneath except for loving on edge just show more pride in work hmm okay this is the other side I see hey Sam do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school at the Coliseum uh, it came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it so either it's good or we can make fun of him for liking it my mom is supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change but I can just ditch out on it probably what time also isn't that movie supposed to be really violent am I going to barf <laughs> According to Todd, it is pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is, is important. Todd wants to see it again. SM15, okay, don't barf. <laughs> Alright, see you then. <laughs> in a burger barfing. I heard someone jiggling a lock or a handle. I didn't like that. Uh, is there anything else? We need a combination. Okay. Well, that's. We need to find a combination. Alright. I'm still getting messages. What do we got in here? Oh. Oh, I thought that was blood for a second. No, it looks like it's, uh, ah, uh, hair color. Coloring. Okay. Ah. Uh, Lonnie Dylan brought her roots. hair dye over today. Hair dye. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. It's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked in the mirror together after, and... I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something. But I waited. And the moment was gone. Mm. October 22nd. See, it sounds like someone's in the attic. I don't like that. I just, I want to point that out. I don't like that. I'm turning on every goddamn light. I don't care. Like, I, I don't like the fact that there are sounds. Anything in the, else in the drawers? No, just close. Nope, it's all just closed. Okay. There's still some moving boxes as well. I see. Nope, just close. All right. Uh, VHS stuff. Butch Cassidy. All the president's men. All right. Mm, Silence of the Lambs. Ooh. I really don't like the extra sounds in this game. Mitten. Oh. Anything in there? No. Just close. Anything in the bathroom? But I don't see anything. A separate room for the tub, I see. After the honeymoon, rediscovering your spouse, personally, spiritually, sexually. Okay. Yeah, let's just put that back. It's not of interest to me. Turn on the lights. Oh, we got another letter. Dear Jan, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I have had our down periods become a bit of a way of life actually you get used to each other you live your own lives in the same house the kids grew up they go away i'm sorry this isn't helping is it 
Don't worry. Terry will get over whatever is distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for Sam being distant, that's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. In the meantime, though, this controlled burn, that sounds like quite the, the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. This new ranger they sent, that's what I want to hear about. Ranger Rick? You have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything and send pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Keep your chin up until Terry is out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend Carol. As she adores them. Carol. Ah, so that must be us. It's a family. Okay. What have we got in here? Why was this light on? Watercolor technique for florals and still lifes. Okay. What have we got up here? Escape from Ghost Mansion. Ooh. Okay. Nice. There's nothing else in here that I see. Yep, nothing else. Okay. Hmm. Oh god, I don't like that. What do we got here? Uh, Katie, Mom and Dad, we're going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you can... Uh, but you came home on such short notice that they weren't around to do it. You can use a room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Sam. Okay. What do we got here? Hey, Sam. You were asking what uh, my JROTC ribbons meant. Here's a handy guide. Ah, okay. Nice. Ghost Hunter Journal? What? August 31st, 1994, 1.19am. A tall shadow is in the upstairs hall. When I rounded the corner, no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? Note, I was not wearing my glasses. September 3rd, 1994, 12.44am. Faint voice, coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello, did not investigate, probably was the furnace. September 994, 411. Uh, poured milk from carton fridge, it was spoiled. Pretty sure I read that spirits can sour milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. Okay. October 9th, Alani says she feels a presence in the TV room. I suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow for it. October 22nd, 11 to 12, Lonnie and I employ Ouija board as a medium. Why? Why did you do that? Disturbing messages are uh, conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. October 28th, I don't like this. Enlisted Lonnie to stay up all night and help uh, patrol premises, recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many signs, but all remain unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in attic, probably a leaky roof. Sample taken just in case. Despite our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All in all, a successful night. Why? Anything in here? Wait a minute. Oh. 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 Um, I'm not gonna check that out just yet. I'm gonna explore around up here before I see check that out. I'm getting messages. <sighs> I'm getting messages. A performance evaluation. Uh, okay, so how our mother is perf name Richard uh, Pattermack, supervisor, Janice Greenbrier. Okay, so more stuff about her mother, I see. Alright. Ooh, that's lovely. It's really nice. Oh, what do we got here? Halloween show. The Misfits, they're awesome. Don't forget your costume. Lounge. Hmm. 
All right. Lie to mom and dad. Sometimes situation. you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's a lie to mom and dad situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. Hmm. <laughs> Unless we got this. No. Okay, let's look out this room. Though, I don't like that. I, I don't like how there's a wardrobe straight in the corner. Healthy choices, goals for a healthful life, great. What do we got here? Lonnie, holy crap, I was in the library and noticed something in the corner and found a sacred passage. It had Oscar's uh, creepy old stuff in it. Oh my god, I have to see this. We're skipping sixth. Closet, mom, dad's room, closet. Wait, there's a secret room? Okay. Wait, really? Mom and dad's room. Really? Oh. Okay. Captain Allegra and the first mate. Your costume, my costume. Oh. Oh. That's sweet. Sewing table. Okay, nothing. What do we got here? Oh! What do we have here? Wildfire, he saved her from the rage and flames, and then things really heated up. <laughs> okay. Alright, let's just put that back. There we go. So there's a secret room. Ugh, I don't like this. Sam's dark room. Do not enter if red lights are on. Well, red lights are on, so we're not entering. <laughs> So from mom and dad's room, there's a secret passage? Excuse me? Oh. Okay. Is there a light switch? What's this? Uh, I don't like this. Hidden compartments found. Three. Library, upstairs hall, and foyer. Hidden compartments? So, the library, upstairs hall, and the foyer. So, there. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're going to have to do some exploration then nope that's not it um wow there's actually a lot to this game that so there's a hidden compartment ah here we go ah okay adjust into the dark at Todd's brother's place after the show there was only a futon to sleep on so Lonnie and I shared it the lights went out I was turned toward her my eyes started to adjust, and then I could see she was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me and was so close and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head, and I really hoped she could tell. 
I really hope that she meant what I think she did. I felt like a shook up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. <laughs> oh. Oh, also, here we go. Oh. Half of Sam's locker combo. Oh! Heaven at the Edge World, Private Do Not Read, The Green Glacier Part 2. Oh! Allegra and her scouting party peered down wearily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls of the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was a strange sight indeed. Such lushness juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the Ring Glacier's Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. We have to hurry! Allegra's party followed behind, moving quietly as a breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the Queen Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. She shouted, No! and flung her saber at the Amazon reach in hand, but it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell toward the water and splashed down, and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked down, looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge. A head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's, from the shoulders and sleeves of his coat, soaking wet. But as the figure stood and the water poured down, Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was no longer a man at all. In fact, what looked back to her were the eyes, the face, the hair, and, and hands, and body of a woman. Still in the first mate's clothes. Still the first mate. He, she, spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain? The Amazonian queen said, She is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt, and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, that's the love of my life, and you can't have her. Oh. Mm, I love love stories. It'd be over here? Aha. Oh, no. Oh. There's the other part of the combination. Oh, who are you, Oscar? What do you want to come back? Uh, you know what? Nope. 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 Zero fifty one is the combo. So zero five one. Ha ha. Okay, cigarettes. That's not really good for you. Key, basement key, well, there's nothing wrong. Today, but everything was different. Why? She was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think. But I said no, there was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say. But I couldn't find the words. I felt like I was going to cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie, do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. <laughs> I am going to cry. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's lovely. That's beautiful. Oh, I love it. I, I love it. Okay, so we have this 
secret passage that we can go through, so we might as well. What's this? Ah, Mason's Farm is... Oh. Oh, what is this? 1963. Okay, I don't know what that's about. Oh. Oh, what is this? What is this place? That's a lie to mom and dad situation, but it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Psycho House Girl, the coolest stuff about being the Psycho House Girl. Cool thing number one, everybody in the hall thinking you don't know they're looking at you and whispering as you walk past because I guess they haven't heard a peripheral. Costume skeletons. Okay. To Samantha Greenbrier from Principal Sheldon Grossman. Dear Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into writing your leather letter. Showed an initiative and was well written, but it does not change my mind on this matter. While I understand that Miss DeSoto is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is that she defaced school property with profanity. The fact that she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another student doing the same to yours is immaterial. As to your complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, the fact is that no guilty party has come forward and there has been no convincing evidence as to who might have defaced your locker. In other words, there is no one to punish. I would suggest letting this issue drop as it will only bring more unwanted attention on yourself, which I believe is what you claim I began this whole incident in the first place. I don't Lonnie. get Lonnie sometimes. Like her band and our zine and her hair and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like she's going to join the army and then have uh... to lie about who she is. She said they don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to like defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Hmm. Okay, that was getting Lonnie. I want to see. I got a key for the basement. Is that what the... Does this key go to that door? Um... Over he down here? Or does it go... Oh, wait. Does it go down here? I think it goes down here. Okay. So, let's go down this way. I am getting a little paranoid. That... But it doesn't help that there are random sounds going on. Okay, we're now in the basement. Spooky. Very. Oh, what do we got? Dear Samantha, I would like to cordially um, thank you for having me to your uh, abode for the Thanksgiving holiday with your lovely family. I enjoyed the flavorful potatoes, and also it was weird being around your parents for that long, but it was pretty funny how impossible it is for your dad not to be awkward for more than 30 seconds at a time. Very cordially yours, your close friend and confidant, Lonnie D. <laughs> oh, quite, yes. Dear Miss Soto, allow, uh, Miss DeSoto, allow me to th uh, take this opportunity to thank you in kind for being such a gracious host for the festivities at your father's estate. Following the aforementioned meal with my parents, your family's Thanksgiving feast was, um, was the more enjoyable of the two events, I must say. Especially appreciate the a time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with sterling taste and a refined air. Let's do it again, same time next year, shall we? Indeed, Madam Samantha Greenbrier Esquire. 
Mm. They're so cute. They are so cute together. Aww. Aww. It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night, or it's just quiet and we're alone, we say I love you. Oh. Oh, another um, reproductive thing. All right. Caitlin. Okay, so another plaque. So Sam has one and Caitlin has one. Makes sense. It's really spooky down here. Ooh. Furnace is loud. Of course it is. Let's turn the lights on because I don't like being down here. Dear Samantha Greenbrier, um, congratulations. I am pleased to inform you of your admission for, to the creative run tr track of the Reed College Summer Program for Young Scholars for its 1995 session. We believe you have much to contribute to the Reed College community based on your portfolio and an academic record. I am also pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer program's tuition fees. The attached documentation at D delineates uh, your schedule, optional secondary track choices, and your dormitory assignment. Please remember to su submit the attached form if you wish to be eligible for one of the three Reed full-time undergraduate scholarships be awarded to exemplary students at the end of each summer program. We very much look forward to your attendance. Again, congratulations on your admission and best wishes from all of us at Reed College. Sincerely, Julie Morris, Director of Admissions. Oh, getting into so college. stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like 12. Oh. And I guess she's really going to do it. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Oh. No. Go harpen customizable with 10 letters. LNS. Oh. One dad's. Something's stuck to it. Uh, thank you for sending along a copy of your newly published book and author's first published manuscript. It's a monumental occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognize my son. Subject matter. Author's work is. Is the externalization of that which he holds dear and that which he fears. And in this respect, I believe your work was successful. But the lens through which, uh, which the personal sh shown was needlessly clouded by genre cliches and implausible dimestone science fictional day ex machina. I congratulate you on the surviving uh, the great ordeal that is publication and rest assured that Readers of your chosen genre will lap up copies hungrily, but I urge you to shed artifice. You can do better with a father's love and encouragement, Richard Greenbrier. Oh. What do we got here? A newspaper clipping. Oh. Uh, Mason's Pharmacy, Soda Fountain Welcomes, Boone County Youngsters. Uh, okay. Her nephew, Mr. Mason, and... Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Turn that on. There's a room in there we can go into. Uh, oh, wait, we can open this. I think that's mom's citizenship, citizenship stuff. Uh, certificate of naturalization. On July 20th, 1972, the court having found that Janice Elizabeth Connolly Greenbrier 
then residing at 1010 Fifth Avenue, Seattle, Washington, intends to reside permanently in the United States and had complied with the applicable provisions of such naturalization laws and was entitled to be admitted to citizenship. Thereupon ordered that such person be, and she was admitted as a citizen of the United States of America. In testimony, where is Okay, so our mother needed citizenship. Okay. Why why was I able to grab the lid of that? I don't understand why I was able to do that. I don't get it. Oh. Oh, what is this? Mason's pharmacy pharmacy changes hands. Okay, some more information about Sir Mason. Oh, I think I see where this goes. Oh, it leads back up here. Ah, we're back here. Okay. Okay, so there was a way to get from there to here. Okay. Well, that's good to know then. Uh, we got letter. See. Dear Sam, I'm so happy you liked the drawing. I was thinking of us when I drew it. I knew you'd be able to tell. You love Mexico, I think. Probably. The nature is totally different than back home. I keep thinking about Allegra and the first mate lost on a mysterious island where even the plants are out to get them. And I think of them together, out there in the wilderness together. And I start thinking of you again. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel you. I've been trying to save it up. Save it up for when we're together again. I haven't done a good job, okay? But I tried. Okay, enough about that. Your last letter got to me the day before we start driving back north. We'll be racing this letter home. If I get home first, we can read it together. And yes, I'm taking tons of photos. We'll have to spend so much time together in the dark room. To a more Lonnie. Oh. X-ray. Hmm. Cute. Uh, set list. All right. Todd's band sing. lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit, and he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, "I can sing," and they were all kind of like, "You can," and she was like, "Probably." But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. But till then, I'm going to be at every single show. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh, what do we got here? Ah. Let's try that code we got. So 1963. That. Yep, yeah, there we go. Oscar Mason, return to sender. Dear sister, I write what shall be my last appeal to go unanswered, one way or the other. I feel a prisoner, as on an island, with no jailer, no human soul for commune, only my one mind, examining itself, endlessly, endlessly searching for relief. In the years since transgression, I have sought no absolution, only bare forgiveness. In good faith, I have removed myself from all temptation, sacrifice to prove my commitment however I can imagine. Since mother's passing, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin, to be treated as human again, to breathe the air of human spirit once more. By grace, even a wretch like me could be saved, but I do not expect it. If not response is received, I shall henceforth accept my sentence, and one day simply cease to be. 
with the brothers love always Oscar Mason hmm hydrogen hydrogen peroxide morphine tart tartate aquatil okay oh doesn't work Found a toy. And a height chart. 1963. I keep seeing 1963 everywhere. It's like all over the place. Wait, there's like a page right here. It's like a drug. The first time was in my room in the middle of the night. I woke up and Lonnie was kissing me. The clock said 3.13. No. What? No, I didn't. God damn it. I didn't finish reading it. <sighs> you didn't let me finish reading it. Okay, I'm going to have to pause the video there and once I'm editing this. Just so that I can actually read that. <sighs> yep, that we found already. Hmm. Chips. Okay. Empty pizza box. Great. Oh. Oh, where are we now? Ah, okay, I see where we are. Guardian angels up above bless this house with lots of love. Oh. Okay, salon stuff. What do we got here? Hey, Lonnie, sorry my mom was such a bitch last night. She's hardly ever around since her force is like an hour away, and then when she is home, she takes it out on you, like, because you're not a member of the family, she knows. She won't call her on it, and I'm sorry. Haha, <laughs> it's okay, I know she's just jealous of our cool and freewheeling lifestyles. I feel sorry for you. I'm lucky, my mom lives in Florida. You have a... You have to have a mom every day. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up... The mom thing like that. I know I shouldn't complain. No, I'm being totally serious. My mom is a psycho Christian and her new husband, Don, is a complete tool. Living in Florida with him and her eternal punishment in my mind. So you wouldn't rather live with your mom in Florida? No. Wow. Okay. Offer of promotion. Oh. Our mother got a promotion. Due to your exemplary management of the Flintlock prescribed burn for operation last year and the services need for experienced personnel to direct regional operations, we would like to offer you the position of Regional Conservation Management Director responsible for operations throughout Northwestern Oregon. Hmm. Nice. That's nice. Ooh, what's this? Oh. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Well, um, I think what I'm going to do is end this episode here. I think this is a good stopping point. I hope you all are really enjoying this because I truly am. God, I like this. I really, really like this game. But I hope you all have been enjoying this. If you have, please leave a thumbs up. Comment down below. Once you've done that, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to stay notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Hope everyone's doing well. I hope. Um, helps me out. And I'll see you all in the next one. In the next episode. I can't speak. Bye-bye. <laughs>